Good morning, church. Great to have you with us this morning. A few quick announcements. If you're willing and able to sign in on the pew pads at the end of the pew, we'd love to have you do so. <coughs> Excuse me, that would be fantastic. Our fall painting party, November 11th, over at our Stewart location. Um, cost 20 bucks, sign up sheet in the lobby. Um, feel free to join Pastor Rebecca for our fall painting party over at Stewart. Harlots and Heroines Bible Study. If you've been participating in that Bible study, awesome, thank you so much. This week over at Stewart, it will not be held in the social hall. It will be held in the sanctuary because we're hosting Family Promise this week over at our Stewart location. So please go to the sanctuary for the Bible study, not the social hall. If you're interested in becoming a new partner in ministry, hear it as member class. I don't like the word membership because I don't want you to be a member. That's for a country club. I want you to partner with us in ministry. If you're interested in that, again, there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. We'd love to have you do so. Sisters in Spirit with Deacon Cheryl, uh, this Tuesday down at Panera, 7 o'clock, um, for Bible study with Deacon Cheryl. Our, our trunk or treat, our fall trunk or treat, October 27th, right here, 6 o'clock, games, food, chili cook-off. If you're interested in throwing your chili in the ring, there is a sign-up sheet in the lobby. Uh, Roger Zelke won last year. He told me this morning he's going with a different recipe. That sounds kind of risky, right? I don't know. We'll see. Holy Land trip. Yeah, I'm not actually going to talk about the Holy Land trip. So, when I, but I left that slide up because I do... I do want to sort of, oh man, it's, it's such a hard and difficult and tragic and complicated situation. So I, I guess my ask is that we, is obviously the prayer for peace um, is super important um, and just kind of recognizing that uh, terrorism is terrorism regardless of who is perpetrating it and it is wrong on both sides and innocent lives are lost and affected and please keep uh, the entire Middle East in your prayers um, because what's going on is absolutely tragic on, um, on so many levels. I've had a lot of questions for resources. The best book that I've read to date um, on that sort of touches on what's going on over there that, got to th that has sort of got us back to this point um, is a book called The Other Side of the Wall by Pastor Munther Isaac. Um, so if you're interested in that, see me after worship. I think I actually have a copy I can show you in my, in my bag in the back. Um, it's, it's the best book I've read that kind of looks at the biblical perspective and says, okay, so how do we deal with this tension of, of what the Bible says and how everything's lived out? And um, it's a Lutheran pastor at Bethlehem Lutheran, or Christmas Lutheran Church over in Bethlehem. Um, really great guy, great book, and it's been helpful in me. I've kind of gone back and sort of rereading it again as everything has bubbled up. Family Promise Bed Races, Saturday, October 14th. We finished second. We finished second, which is fantastic. So for those who don't know, you literally, you make a bed and put wheels on it, and then you race it down the street. Um, Man-powered racing, man and woman-powered racing. So we finished second this year, which is fantastic. This year, as every year, they put little fish bowls out that you can buy tickets for a buck, and you stuff those tickets in the bowl, and they call it the People's Choice Award. We didn't win that either this year. We have in the past. So, but for all of the beds, the 13, the 13 organizations that put beds in the bed race, we raised $1,800 just in single tickets in those, in those little fish bowls, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, we finished, the American Legion won, and I think they had like 500 bucks. I'm going to say we had 499, um, and then I can blame y'all for, if just one of you would have showed up, we would have tied. Um, but great cause. But the, the, bigger, the bigger point is we had a community come together and over the course of the bed races between sponsors and those tickets and registration, raised over $31,000 um, to help homeless families right here in our community. Yeah, amazing. Um, if you're not familiar with Family Promise, I, I strongly encourage you to check it out. Um, it's a great organization. Essentially, we're taking families that are experiencing a homeless here in Martin County. We know that there's over 700 kids registered in our school district in Martin County that are registered as homeless. Uh, which is just a tragic number. Um, I would love to say that we're housing all 700 of them. Uh, there just isn't enough housing, but we're doing what we can. It's a great organization. Um, I'll talk about it all day, but we don't have all day. Um, 
yeah, thank you so much for your support over the years for Family Promise and your continued support and prayers for that ministry. It's, that's the hard part, and thank God that I am not part of that because I would not sleep at night. And I know that our case manager, so we have a case manager at Family Promise, and we will get, we will get calls. We will, go, we will go through a screening with them um, to screen out domestic abuse, um, to screen out drug use. And the reason we screen out domestic abuse is because it's such a volunteer-led organization with the families often staying in the churches that that domestic abuse thing we, we kick to, the, to some of the shelters to let them handle it because they're, a little, they're better equipped to do it. Um, it's really a need basis. And I would love to say that we're able to take all of the families that come to us, but frankly, we're not. So what we've, what we've created at Family Promise here in Martin County, we've only been in this existence for like three or four years. And the amazing thing, in that three or four years, Family Promise is a national organization, the national office will call us and say, hey, how are you handling this situation? And they'll say, oh, well, we're doing it this way. Oh, that's fantastic. So the goal is if someone calls us and says, hey, you know, uh, you know me and my three kids are about to, be, got, about to be evicted, we get on the phone right away and call the landlord and say, hey, what can we do to support this family? We will, we will, we will do everything we can to support this family to keep them in their house. Because once, once they lose it, y'all seen rent, rent in this area? It's, it's off the charts. We can't, we, it's, hard to, it's harder to rehouse someone than it is to keep them in their housing. We've also acquired a couple apartment buildings um, in town. So we have four apartment units that we can put families in and a couple other leases we've engaged in. It's really, it's a screening process. And when, a, when we get a family through the program and space comes available, we put, we put the next family in. I, I, there's no good way to do it. Um, they're really... You can't tell me that a, that a family that's homeless that with kids don't deserve a place to live um, because they absolutely do. And the tragedy is we can't house all of them. It's almost the, you've heard of the starfish thing, right? The little boy's throwing the star, there's starfish all over the beach and the little boy throws one back and the guy says, you can't possibly save all the starfish. You know, what are you doing? He says, well, it matters to that one. And that's kind of the approach we're taking more than one at a time, but we just can't, we can't possibly fill the need, unfortunately, in our community right now. Um, so it's a screening process, and I don't, we make it as fair as we can, but I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to do it because I, would, I wouldn't sleep at night. I might cry because you all see me do that from time to time. Uh, lunch Bunch today is going to the Olive Garden. Uh, feel free to join Gene and the Lunch Bunch at the Olive Garden after worship. Love to have you join the group. Our youth gathering, we're taking our kids in New Orleans, and as I pointed out last service, we'll bring them back as well. Um, we have, I think right now we have nine kids signed up. It's a great week of, a uh, short week of worship and service and community building. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the youth gathering, um, ask me or better yet, ask one of our youth um, typically at our, at our 930 service. That's all I've got. Please rise as you're able as we begin worship with brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. God of the journey, give us the commitment of Ruth that we might follow your call, no matter how challenging it may seem. Open our ears to hear your words now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Ruth, the first chapter. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Milan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Milan and Chilion also died, so that the women was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until then they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. They then wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, 
I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. The word of God, the word of life. So I feel like I need to do a little bit of catch up because I was in our Stewart location last week. So we got to kind of pull this all together from last week and this week. So last week y'all talked about last week's text was about Oh, thank you so much. Last week's text was about the Ten Commandments. We're not going to go over the Ten Commandments. We kind of get the gist of the Ten Commandments, right? Now, I don't think you all talked about the Shema. Am I correct? So Shema, so last week's reading went from Moses giving the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy to the Shema. And the Shema essentially is love God with everything you got and your neighbor. Simple put. You did? Awesome. Perfect. We were on, me and Pastor Rebecca were on the same page. Beautiful. So, so the text last week was, you know, Ten Commandments and the Shema. And the whole idea behind this was that Moses was trying to impress upon the people he was speaking to, speaking to the Israelites, saying, write this on your doorpost, put this to memory, tattoo it on your arms, whatever you've got to do, make sure this is ingrained in every fiber of your being. And none of you flinched when I said Moses said tattoo it on his arms. Anybody want to get tattoos? I had one person Saturday night. I had about five last service, nobody this service. Okay. Moses wanted people to have the Ten Commandments and this, this idea of the Shema, to love God and love your neighbor, so ingrained in every fiber of your being, to recite the Shema twice a day so that you knew and everything you did was out of that action, and it was reflex. You didn't have to think about it. You didn't pause. It just became second nature. That was last week's text. This week's text, we get Ruth and Naomi. So Naomi lives in Bethlehem. There's a famine in Bethlehem, and she's relocating to Moab. Now, here's sort of the, the funny irony. Bethlehem translated as house of bread. So in the house of bread, there's a famine. But she heard that in Moab, there's food. So they relocate to Moab. Now, the Moabites and the Israelites did not get along. There was tension there left over from the Exodus, so the Israelites and the Moabites did not get along. So, so her willing, being willing to move from Bethlehem to Moab was kind of a big deal. It wasn't like going to uh, Hobe Sound. Hey, you know what? I hear they have good restaurants in Hobe Sound. I'm going to go down to Hobe Sound and have lunch. Much, much more tension than Palm City to Hobe Sound. So there was, there was this dislike between the, the Israelites and the Moabites. But they go anyway. And what happens when she's there? Her husband passes away. Now, what is the plight of widows in this time period in history? You have to, you have to find a husband because you can't be by yourself. This is not me saying this. This is ancient world stuff. I am not saying that y'all women can't support yourselves. I didn't say it. We're talking antiquity. So in biblical culture, if you were a widow... You had to find someone for your own security, your own well-being, your own, your own safety, and your own lifeblood. It was sort of required. Now, there are all these laws in, in Scripture that talk about, well, if your husband dies, then so-and-so is responsible. Well, her husband died, but she had two sons, but the two sons died. So now she literally has no one. So she's in this vulnerable state. Now, her, when, she, when they moved to Moab, her sons married two Moabite women, Orpha and Ruth. Fun fact, if you go to type Orpha into a Word document, it auto-corrects to Oprah. But we're not talking Oprah. And actually, we're not even talking Orpha because she's kind of a subplot in the story. So Ruth, having also lost her husband, hooks up with, his, with her mother-in-law and says, listen, this is important to me. 
You are important to me. I am going to travel with you. I will go with you. And she actually makes six promises in our text today. Now, the funny thing is that this isn't working. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Did you do that or did I do that? Oh, thanks. So the six promises that she makes to Ruth. Now, I'm starting with five and six because I don't want to end with five and six, if you know what I mean. So the fifth promise she makes is we will die together and we will, six is we will be buried together. But I don't want to end on that because that's kind of, kind of ended on a downer and may not be super compelling to y'all. So the first thing that she promises, she says, we will journey together. I will travel with you. Now keep in mind, this journey from Moab to Bethlehem is not safe. It's not a safe journey for her to be making by herself. And to be quite honest, it's really not safe for two women to be do- taking by themselves. It's only slightly safer. She says, I will travel with you. And she says, and when we get there, we will live together. I will not leave you once we get there. We will travel together and I will live with you. I will be with you. We will share a common people. This is a big deal when you look at, when you consider the fact that the Moabites and the Israelites did not get along. She said, I, or we will share a common people. And then she says, and we will share a common God. Now, throughout this dialogue between Naomi and Ruth, Naomi is trying to talk her out of this. And Ruth says, no, I will go with you. She says, no, 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 you're still young. You can find someone else. You can remarry. It's not too late for you. It is too late for me. Stay here. I'm going to go back. And she says, no, I will journey with you, live with you, share a people with you, share a God with you, and we will die together and be buried together. Now, does that list of six things maybe reflect anyone we might kind of sort of talk about every now and then in this space on a Sunday morning? Ah, yes, absolutely. Jesus says, we will journey together, we will live together, We will share a common people. We will share a common God. And I will die for you. I will be buried for you. And I will, what doesn't come up in this text is I will leave the grave for you. Now the beauty is we have a baptism. Part of that baptismal journey is indeed these promises. God says, Jesus says, I will journey with you. I will live with you. We will be a common people. We will share a God. And I have died for your sins. And I have left the grave for your sins. That's the beauty of that baptismal covenant as part of, part of this journey that Ruth is promising. Now, let's just do this first. So last week, we talked about the Ten Commandments, and you talked about the Shema. This week, we get introduced to a new word, chesed. Now, chesed is this, is this deep, steadfast love that we really get, it's really embodied in God and in the love of Christ. It's this, I will not leave you. I will never leave you. No matter what, my love for you is so steadfast that I will not forsake you. That's this idea of hesed. Now, this text this morning from the book of Ruth is really trying to lay out and solidify in concrete detail in a personal story, in a personal way, what it means to embody the Ten Commandments, what it means to embody this this relationship with God where you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your being, and your neighbor as yourself. This text in Ruth is trying to drive home that point that it becomes second nature. Because for Ruth, it was absolutely second nature. Naomi said, no, 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 this, you, need, you need to stay. Don't come back with me. And she says, no, no. I have made this commitment. I have promised you that I will go with you. against my safety, and against what many would say common sense. Because the Moabites and the Israelites just didn't mesh. 
Now, maybe if you happen to you know, click on the TV or, or scroll through social media, perhaps maybe you might see something going on in the same perhaps general area where there may or may not be tension right now. If we're living into this idea of loving God and loving, loving our neighbor, this idea of this steadfast love, that, that that commitment and that love is deeper than anything else, the world is a different place. The world is a different place. Now, the easy example that's much more easy to talk about than, than war and terrorism, I'm a sports guy. I love sports. So you got a Dolphin shirt on. Dolphins play, who do they play next week, do you know? I do. They play the Eagles next week. Oh, yeah. So, so the Eagles, some, last service we had somebody with a Jets jersey. Jets have never beaten the Eagles. When we have these rivalries in sports, Penn State plays Ohio State next week. You have these rivalries in sports, and we... And, it's an easier example, and it's much less tense to talk about it that way. You go, man, I'm not talking to you next week because Penn State plays Ohio State on Saturday at noon. I'm going to miss the game. But there's this tension and there's this hatred. But what the Ten Commandments and the Shema and Hesed calls us to is to say, you know what? I don't care that you're going to put on a stupid Ohio State shirt next week and Ohio State hat, and you're going to yell at the TV, cheer for Ohio State, and if I were actually buy a TV tomorrow, next week for the game, I would sit with my Penn State gear on, and I would yell at the TV, rooting for Penn State, and hoping that Ohio State blows it. And because we, we have this hatred for each other's schools, pff, we can't talk. We can't be in the same room. Like, it's a silly example because we all know that sports is beautiful entertainment and a great way to kind of take our mind off the realities of the world. But at the end of the day, our love of Christ, our, our community, our bonding together in our baptism as the body of Christ should be way deeper than Penn State and Ohio State or the Eagles and the Jets or the Eagles and the Dolphins or whatever, whatever other ways we choose to divide ourselves. The world should work that way. With every facet, every way in which we divide ourselves, Christ tries to pull us back together. That's why Moses stood in front of his people and said, listen, love God, love your neighbor, period. Recite it, put it on your doorpost, recite it every day, tattoo it on your arms, whatever you've got to do, make it second nature that when, that, when, the, when the game kicks off, you're saying, man... I love you. I don't care what happens in this game. You really do. But not to the point where it affects the relationships. We've let so many things divide us, and we can say, oh, that just happens in the Middle East, and it's happened for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, there's a deep history there. But let's not pretend in our country we don't divide ourselves over things, that we don't create our own division. But God continually calls us back to this idea and this deep, steadfast love and commitment. And maybe, just maybe, we can embody that. Maybe we can embody that, that each time that something comes up, it's second nature for us to love the person rather than look for the division. It's what God calls us to. It's what God calls us to each and every day. It's what God calls us to in our baptism. Listen to the words when we do the baptism in a few minutes. Listen to the words and the promises we're making about justice and peace. God calls us to that. Let us be agents of it. Amen. Please rise as you're able and join in singing our hymn of the day.
You may be seated. I invite the family forward for the baptism. This is what they call a holy audible. What? You got to stand over here. Use that just to follow along. To follow along. There you go. Yep, there you go. Yeah, face that way. Awesome. In the Gospel of Mark, we read, Some people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples scolded the people. When Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, Let the children come to me and do not stop them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I assure you that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. He took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. And he blessed them. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity in the waters of baptism. We are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we, Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Alexis and James. In Christian love, you have presented Bella and Bentley for holy baptism. With this gift also come responsibilities. I ask you, parents and sponsors, do you promise to faithfully bring Bella and Bentley to worship? If so, respond, I do. Do you promise to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments? If so, respond, I do. Do you promise to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith so they will gain an understanding of what God has done and will be doing in their lives? Do you promise to nurture them in faith and prayer so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others, and work for justice and peace. Do you renounce the, all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Bella and Bentley in their new life in Christ? If so, please answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for your spirit moved over the waters and you created the heavens and the earth, calling forth life in which you took delight. When the earth was flooded and you saved Noah and his family on the ark, you sent the rainbow as a sign of hope and promise. At the Red Sea, you led the whole nation of Israel through the water into safety. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Jesus set us free from the bondage of sin and death and has opened the way to eternal life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this water so that Bella and Bentley may be given new life. Wash away their sin. Bring them forth as children of God destined for an eternity with you. To you be given all praise, honor, and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Who's, who's up first? All right, Bentley. Bentley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give you that. All right, Bella. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's for water or tears. It works for both. All right, Bella, let's get you first here. You're running out of steam, girl. You have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Hi, Bentley. You have been marked and sealed with the cross of Christ and the Holy Spirit forever. See if the fire works. Maybe giving this to you isn't a great idea. <laughs> Bella, let your light so, sh so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And Bentley? 
Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the giver of all life. Look with kindness upon Alexis and James that they may be always joyful in the precious gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism so one day they will all share eternally the salvation given to them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, welcome your newest brothers and sisters in Christ, Bella and Bentley. The peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Sometimes you just need a nap. <laughs> so, Lene, we're going to go back to the creed and the prayers. We got it. Awesome. Thank you. Please rise as you're able. Might need these. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you alone are worthy of all praise and honor. To you we lift our hearts as we pray, knowing you hear every word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created our world and watch over it. You sent Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, into our world to bring peace to our hearts. You taught us how to love because you loved us first. You taught us to love and not hate as we seek peace and not war. Yet here we still are faced with hatred, discrimination, and wars around the world. It breaks our hearts as we know it breaks yours to see such horrible, senseless suffering of our sisters and brothers of humanity. As we pray for peace, healing, and reconciliation, help the leaders of countries at war to see that violence is never the answer to peace. We cling to the hope of one day where nations will no longer make war on other nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for all refugees around the world who have lost the safety of their homes and occupations. We pray for those having to relocate their families due to famine. We pray for humanitarian aid to reach all in need. May we be your arms of comfort and care to meet their physical and emotional needs that may know, that, that may know you are with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in times of distress, we pray for the Holy Spirit to draw us close to you. We pray for all those ailing in body, mind, and spirit those we name in our hearts and those we name aloud before you now. Jordan, Ron, Jackie, Richard, Brian, Judy, Joyce, Robert, Linda and Jean, Robert, Annabella, Samuel, Dot, John, and Linda. In their time of need, may they feel your presence and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for houses of worship to be a refuge where all are welcome, a place where forgiveness and love abounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
hear our prayer. Lord, you call your church to be, un- to, to be united in you, yet we find ourselves divided by human choices. Help us to focus on what does unite us, your love for humanity, our love for you, and where you call us to live our lives in service in your kingdom, where you call us to work in your kingdom. Give us the courage to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, who is the Father and the Holy Spirit, reigns now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we, can, as we continue worship with our t- blessing of gifts, tithes, and offerings. We bring these gifts before you, asking your blessing and dedicating them to the work of your kingdom of mercy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
having confessed our sin in the presence of God and one another, we now receive the tangible and real presence of God's forgiveness in the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us a spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our communion assistants to come forward. Communion this morning will be done at two stations, beginning with the station to my right. As you come forward with your usher's guidance, you'll first receive a wafer, either regular or gluten-free. At the table, a cup with either wine, the darker colored liquid, or grape juice, the lighter colored liquid. Then we ask you, please place your empty cup in the basket held by our communion assistant. All are welcomed at Christ's table.
please rise as you're able. May the mystery of this holy meal give us the strength and the courage to cast away darkness and turn to the light of your holy Son. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace, be the light. Thanks be to God.